Hello, today I will be showing you a new process I have come across for cleaning up metal. A lot of the steel I order for my projects comes in this form. This is hot rolled, meaning it is rolled when it is still hot, and that has the unfortunate side effect of covering the steel in a bunch of surface contaminants, which are quite nasty. Traditionally, I would remove those with a flat wheel, but that takes a long time and I'm limited with my access. So if there's a tight space, I cannot access it. Um, but today I'm going to be showing you a new process that can make this tubing go from this into this. Perfectly clean too, in a matter of just a few minutes. Uh, anyways, this process involves an acid treatment. And the great thing about it is it takes only a couple minutes, requires no power tools whatsoever, and provides a better cleaning job than any other solution I've seen. So here's a practical demonstration of what the alternative looks like. If you look very carefully, the cross section of this tube, it actually dips down in the middle of all these faces, and that's because when they make this tubing, they actually roll it so they can't get perfect uh, 90 degree corners and they can't have perfectly flat surfaces. That's one of the bigger challenges with doing it the old fashioned way is you can get these edges, but the middle, because it dips down, you have to remove a lot of material to remove all the slag. In this case here, we have a four and a half inch flap disc and these, this one is a 60 grit. Even if you get these in bulk, it is still a um, few bucks a pop, so it's an unnecessary expense to say the least. You see, the first time I go and sand it, because of that dip in the middle, I'm not getting all the uh, material off. Not to mention, it's hard to get these corners because if I do it, I can only do a little bit at a time and I end up kind of messing up the profile of the tube. You have to really jam the sander right in there and be aggressive and it ends up getting the metal too hot to touch and it makes a huge mess, and it's just generally not the smartest way to do things. Due to the poor audio quality, both from my outdoor setup and me wearing a respirator, I should mention I am recording this audio in post. While this process is very easy and convenient, it does entail using some very hazardous chemicals. Anyways, the first part of this project is the container. I had to meet a few requirements, Firstly, chemical compatibility. I cannot have the acid wearing the container away. Uh, in this case, I chose polypropylene. It is the most common plastic used in storage containers, and it is very good at resisting acid. The next requirement was that of size. I wanted the biggest container I could get, so I wouldn't be limited in the size of tubing and plates I could process. However, I also wanted a very shallow container, so there would be a minimal amount of vapor stored in the container, and it would be easy to work in. With the container out of the way, it is time to introduce our chemical, hydrochloric acid, otherwise known as muriatic acid. This acid is found in our stomachs and is commonly used in a variety of purposes, such as controlling the pH of pools. I bought my acid, again at Canadian Tire, and I found it to be about $18 per gallon. In this case, I purchased the acid at a 31% concentration. You may have a little bit of trouble understanding me, but that's because I am now wearing a respirator. The fumes in this case produced are going to be rather large because I will be pouring the liquid, and I do not want to breathe them in. If you ever catch a whiff of these fumes, you will immediately feel a very powerful burning sensation in your throat, mouth, or nose. So it is very important not to breathe this in. Let's begin. I'm also wearing eye protection 
to keep any stray droplets from entering my corneas. Due to the large size of the container, this is actually not going to be enough acid. So I will have to add some more from another source. In the meantime, I will cap this to keep the vapors from coming off. This right here is an example of a container I've actually used for quite a while now. This is how I tested the process. I like to keep a brick on top of it to make sure it's absolutely sealed. So when I pull off, I can actually feel the seal breaking. If I pull the lid off, a lot of vapor is going to come out of this because it's been piling up in the hot sun for a while. There's also a lot of condensation on the lid. So when I pull the lid off, I'll just kind of let that drip back down in. That's powerful vapor. Anyways, you will see this stuff is orange. This is about half a gallon and I've done probably about 50 feet of this tubing so far. And even though it is already a dark orange color and it's filled with lots of oil and visual contaminants, it actually still does a really effective job. So this acid lasts an exceptionally long time. Anyways, I will be adding this old acid to the new container. Now I will lower this as much as I can and try to carefully pour this out. Now, this is a tool I like to use. Stainless steel tongs. This thing is the hinge is way back here. If you use pliers, they will actually rust out and they'll be ruined and you won't be able to remove them anymore. So I will deposit the tube into the solution. Pick a side that you can see. And you will see immediately the tube starts losing its surface coating. And the hotter the acid is, the quicker this process actually operates and works. So you can already see it's only been like a minute or two and already most of the surface coating is gone. Once I'm satisfied with the process, I will take the tube out, lightly shake it, very lightly, just to get the, a few remaining drops off. Okay, so I've actually taken my respirator off because the lid is on and the vapors are no longer a problem. Our tube is still covered in some amount of hydrochloric acid with some amount of contaminants in it. So to remove the last of the hydrochloric acid, I will dip it into the water. You can let it sink down if you want. And from this point, it's very simple. All I must do is remove it from the water. Just wipe it off, wipe the water off so it will not rust. And this is it, a perfectly clean steel tube. So in this case, you can see where we sand it, there's still um, a large amount of scratch marks, but on every other surface of the tube, all the contaminants have been removed. And this is a clean tube ready to weld or paint or whatever. It is worth knowing that the fact that this mild steel is literally nothing on it protected from rust it will actually rust out even just being exposed to the air over the next few days thanks for watching i hope for some of you it can be as big of a time saver as it has been for me if you like the video i would implore you to drop a like and possibly check out some of my other content see you next time